With this video I will introduce you to Flexbox. This is part of the utilities section of the Bootstrap framework. But more importantly, it is what the Bootstrap grid system is based on. Let me demonstrate. In Wappler, I create a new document. Inside the document I will add a container with a top margin. I then duplicate the container. In the first container, I add a row and a column. Inside the column I add a button and give it a style. In the second container, I add a flex container. To the flex container I add flex wrap and left and right negative margins. Don't worry if this sounds like gobbledygook, all will be explained later on. Inside the flex container, I add a paragraph and remove the default text. I then add a button and style it as above. The paragraph has a bottom margin which I remove. While here, I add left and right padding. Lastly I add the flex grow property so that it occupies all of the available space. Comparing the two paragraphs, they are very similar. In the first container I duplicate the column a few times, so that I finish up with four buttons. Notice how that buttons are evenly spaced out. In the second container I duplicate the paragraph, again finishing up with four buttons. Here we see that they are similarly spaced out. As you have probably already guessed, with the example in the second container, I have mimicked the bootstrap grid in the first container. This is where the flex container replaces the row element, and the paragraph replaces the column element. For an explanation, I choose the row element and go to the styles panel. Here we see that the row element is in fact a flex container. It shows, display flex. It also shows flex wrap and negative margins. I now choose the flex container. As with the row element, we see that, it too has display flex, flex wrap and negative margins. When I now choose the column element, we see flex grow and left and right padding. I guess that it is no surprise when I see the same properties and values when I choose the paragraph in the second container. Let's have a look at what happens in other views. In mobile view we see the last button wrapped around into a second row. This is flex wrap in action. The other views show the buttons evenly spaced, as expected. The flexible box module usually referred to as Flexbox, was designed as a one-dimensional layout model, and as a method that offers space distribution between items. I will, as briefly as possible, describe the components and properties. When Flexbox is described as being one-dimensional, this refers to the fact that Flexbox deals with layout in one dimension at a time, either as a row or as a column. When working with Flexbox you need to think in terms of two axes, the main axis and the cross axis. The main axis is defined by the flex direction property, and the cross axis runs perpendicular to it. Everything we do with Flexbox refers back to these axes. Another important concept is the start and end. If the flex direction is row and I am working in English, then the start edge of the main axis will be on the left, the end edge on the right. If I were to work in Arabic, then the start edge of my main axis would be on the right and the end edge on the left. When the flex direction is column, the start edge is at the top of the flex container and the end edge at the bottom. This applies to all languages as all have a horizontal writing mode. An area of a document laid out using Flexbox is called a flex container. As soon as we do this the direct children of that container become flex items. As with all properties in CSS, some initial values are defined, so when creating a flex container all of the contained flex items will behave in the following way. Items display in a row. The items start from the start edge of the main axis. 
The items will stretch to fill the size of the cross axis. The items do not stretch on the main dimension, but can shrink. The flex wrap property is set to no wrap. Let's now have a look at and compare the flex properties for the flex containers and flex items. First I choose row. The available flex properties are found under layout. The two flex properties that are available are called vertical align and horizontal align. When I then choose the flex container, I see those same properties, but with a different name. This time they are called justify content and align items. There are three other properties that are available. These are flex direction, flex wrap and align content. I'll explain what these properties do later on. For now I just want to show the difference. Next, I choose column. Again under layout, we see two available flex properties. These are vertical align and order. When I choose paragraph, I see the same two properties. This time one is called align self, while the other is the same as for the column. Namely order. There are two extra properties called flex grow and flex shrink. From this we see that, although the bootstrap grid is based on flexbox, not all of the flex properties are available for the row and the column. This is because flex properties like flex wrap and flex direction have already been built in and other properties like grow and shrink have been replaced by the size of the column. In the last part of this video, I'll take you through the flex properties. First I'll make a few adjustments to better show the effects of applying the properties. We start with the columns in the first container and change the width from being equal to auto. Next, I change the height of the row to 200 pixels. I'll also give the row a border so that we can see the boundaries. While in the design panel, I'll also give the columns a border. Back in app structure, I remove flex grow for each of the paragraphs in the second container. I then change the height of the flex container to 200 pixels and add a border. While here, I add borders to the paragraphs. Lastly, I remove flex wrap from the flex container. I now have default values for each of the containers. So that we have differing content for each of the flex items, I'll change the size of a few of the buttons. I am now ready to show the flex properties that are available for each of the containers. As you will have noticed by now, the Flexbox module has two parts. These are, flex container and flex item. Choosing the first container, I go to row. The first property is called vertical align. The property defines the default behavior for how flex items are laid out along the cross axis on the current line. In this case, 
The cross axis is the vertical axis. The icons graphically show the values of the property. The default value is stretch. The baseline centers the buttons at the start of the cross axis. This is similar to center where the items are centered halfway down the cross axis. In the second container, I go to flex container. The same property is called align items and the results are the same. Back with row, I choose the next property called horizontal align. The property defines the alignment along the main axis. It helps distribute extra free space left over when either all the flex items on a line are inflexible, or are flexible but have reached their maximum size. It also exerts some control over the alignment of items when they overflow the line. Flex start is the default value. This is where the items are packed toward the start of the flex direction. In the flex container, the property is called justify content. The results are the same. These are the two flex properties that are available for the row element. Actually, I say this tongue in cheek. Proficient coders can easily apply all of the available flex properties to the row element. I continue with the flex container and the other flex properties. Flex direction establishes both the main axis and the cross axis, thus defining the direction flex items are placed in the flex container. The default is flex row. Or to put it in Wappler terms, horizontal. The direction is from start to end. For languages such as English, this will be from left to right. For Arabic, this will be from right to left. Flex column, or vertical, is the same, from start to end, or top to bottom. Flex row reverse and flex column reverse flow from end to start. The wrap property can best be illustrated in mobile view. By default, flex items will all try to fit onto one line. When I choose flex wrap, the flex items will pack along the cross axis starting at cross start. Flex wrap reverse starts at cross end. The last flex property for the flex container is called align content. Align content is used for aligning items with multiple lines. It is for aligning on the cross axis and will have no effect on content that is one line. I will not bore you with examples, I'll leave that up to you. Nor will I bore you with using flex property combinations. The main aim of this video is to show you the principles involved when using Flexbox and to show you the hidden Flexbox features with the Bootstrap Grid system. But we are not there yet. So far I have only discussed the Flex container. We have seen that Flex items can be moved within a Flex container as a collective. But what if a Flex item needs to be positioned differently to the other Flex items? The Flex container in the first container is the Bootstrap Row element. In the second container it is the Flex container. The flex items in the first container is the bootstrap column element. In the second container it is the paragraph. Choosing the first container, I reposition some of the columns. For the first column, I change the size from auto to equal. This allows the column to expand, using all of the non-utilized space. When I change the size for the third column, the non-utilized space is divided equally between the first and third columns. I'll now change the order of the columns. Column 3 is promoted to first position. Column 1 is relegated to last. Columns 2 and 4 swap positions. I'll do the same with the flex items in the second container. The alignment and the order are exactly the same as above. The big difference is where I use the grow property while in the example above, I change the size to auto. But are these two examples so different? The answer is an empathic. No. To recap, when dealing with Flexbox, it is important to discard the notion of top and bottom and right to left. 
these terms should be replaced by start and end. I hope that this video has been useful. My name is Ben Pleasier. Thank you for watching.